Hello, welcome to this uh, discussion about uh, powering your wildlife camera or trail camera. It's worth thinking about how you're going to have power for your camera. Over the lifetime of the camera, this is probably the bigger cost. It's probably going to spend more money on batteries if you're using disposable batteries in the lifetime of the camera than you spent on the camera itself. I'm going to talk about the disposable batteries first. Now there's a number of straightforward alkaline brands. I mean these are Energizer Max Plus. These are a bit underpowered uh, for a wildlife camera. Occasionally you can find a bargain, uh, perhaps a supermarket uh, doing a two-for-one or similar offer, which make them just about worth using. But they fade very quickly, so you get no warning of the power disappearing out of them. And they don't last very long. In terms of value for money, in terms of the normal batteries you can find in the supermarket, say, uh, the Energizer Lithium I found to be superior to any of the alkaline brands. They have a particular advantage in that they, they fade away uh, relatively slowly. So for most of the cameras I use, you end up with a situation where the, um, the infrared lights will perhaps not sustain as well. So that instead of a 40 second clip, uh, you get 35 seconds and this is a good warning that the batteries are about to run out and I find after a couple of nights of that then the camera uh, batteries die completely so you get that warning that the batteries are about to run out but I don't use many of these because they're quite expensive the cheapest I found is an online source for about a five pounds for a pack but the cheap sites uh, always uh, end up charging you for post and packing. So uh, the site I was using to buy these uh, charges I think five or six pounds postage and packing because you, you very quickly are over their, their standard first class uh, Royal Mail delivery. So if you're buying say five or six packets that's an extra pound per packet effectively in the delivery charge. So I don't use these very often uh, I tend to use these for cameras where I'm leaving in a space where I don't necessarily get to them uh, every day or on, ev only every few days uh, because they have a better guarantee uh, that they'll keep taking pictures. Of the disposable batteries I've been using recently, uh, these have become my favourite. Uh, these are uh, Procell. Uh, this is the, shall we say, the industrial brand for Duracell. They're not much better than any other alkaline. Uh, the key thing is, because they're a, a trade battery, an industrial battery, uh, you can't buy them retail, but there's a number of online uh, shops that do sell them. You have to buy often a minimum of uh, 30 or 50. But they work out about 30 pence uh, for each cell, each battery. So you're talking about maybe... £1.20, £1.40 to power up a camera, uh, whereas these are about £5. They don't last as long as these energizers, uh, but certainly my experience so far has been, um, you know, probably two, two and a half rounds of these will be equivalent to the lithium. The disadvantage I found with these is like the normal alkalines, they fade away relatively quickly. Uh, that can be frustrating if you've left a camera out all night, there's there's some interesting activity and the, the camera fades overnight. But the price is very attractive. Um, you know, and that's, that's one of the trade-offs we always have to think about. So that's the disposable batteries. Now with rechargeables, the situation is slightly complicated. Uh, there are two... Uh, issues you have to pay attention to. One is the capacity of the batteries, that's how much power they hold, and the second is um, the physical size of the batteries. So this camera is is powered by uh, batteries called Eneloop. 
they are rechargeables. Uh, they're 2,500 milliamp hour, which is, is good for a AA size rechargeable battery. The, the normal capacity rechargeables just won't work in any of these types of cameras. Uh, and even if you do get the camera to be active for a short while, it, it fades very quickly. Uh, these uh, Eneloops are made by Panasonic, and it's a fairly basic uh, but easy to use charger that comes with them. It only takes a couple of hours to charge the batteries up, so that's nice and easy. The size issue, though, is very important. So this other camera I can power with these Duracells. Uh, these are a Duracell uh, rechargeable. They're the same capacity, 2,500 milliamp hours. But the AA specification is not written as tightly as you might expect. So this camera is legitimately sold as taking AA batteries. It will take the inner loops, but if I tried fitting these Duracells into this camera, they would not fit. That's even more worrying for other designs of camera. This uh, Browning camera uh, has a battery drawer that comes out like this. This has got energizer batteries in because I ran out of other batteries at the moment I put them in, but I'll let them run out uh, for the moment. If I put the Duracells into here, it would make it very difficult to get that sliding in and out. And that's a bit frustrating because uh, a packet of four inner loops is about 12 to 15 pounds, uh, whereas the, a packet of four of the Duracell rechargeables is about eight to 10 pounds. So there's quite a difference in price. Uh, I found the, the batteries, um, when I have tried the inner loops in the bigger camera, they last about the same. It's 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 very difficult to give a direct comparison simply because uh, the the conditions any camera in any position might have changed. And how how long are the infrared lights on, for example, at night? The pro one problem with rechargeables that is that they share with these other batteries, uh, the alkaline batteries, they fade very quickly, so you don't have much warning that they're not uh, going to have enough power to power the camera. And another uh, slightly frustrating uh, feature about them, because they're slightly lower voltage than a standard AA battery, and, and that's not by design, that's because of how the chemistry works inside the batteries. You end up with the camera not working, but there's still being quite a lot of juice in the rechargeable. So the recharging is relatively quick. So I find I, I charge these perhaps more than is strictly necessary, but it means it reduces the chance of them fading overnight, which means there's a battery change more often. So for example, if I put a lithium set of batteries into most of these cameras, I would expect them to last four to six weeks, depending on what the camera is doing, how long uh, each clip is taking overnight, how many clips it's taking. With the uh, Pro Cells, I would expect three weeks maybe. If I, cha if I charge these up every week, or sometimes I try and do it about every five days, that's far more battery changes. One of the frustrations with um, changing batteries on some of these cameras is very soon if you take the batteries out, they forget some of their settings, most importantly the date and time. Uh, and if you're using multiple cameras and you are editing video clips together, you want the cameras roughly in, in synchronization with each other. One of the, the tips I have found is that you can use an external power supply. This was about seven pounds. And you can power up the camera, to put power in the camera from the mains before you take the rechargeables out, leave it on power while everything is charging up. And when you put the rechargeables in, all the settings have been saved, your time setting is saved. Uh, that saves a lot of effort. 
Of course, you can always use one of these power supplies uh, to power up your camera while it's outside. The difficulty with that is you can get some moisture getting into the camera uh, unless you, you put it in a, a careful position. If you don't have mains power near where your outdoor camera will be, there are other options as well. Uh, one feature that's uh, becoming very popular at the moment is a solar charger. It has its inbuilt battery that it charges up and this uh, so it, it charges up from the solar and uses its internal battery to power your camera overnight. Uh, some of these have got some very good reviews. I haven't used one, uh, not yet. My um, my circumstances are there are very few positions where I am taking pictures or I'm taking videos uh, where a solar panel would be easy to use. Uh, I'm finding it a very interesting project to try and discover how uh, badgers and hedgehogs move around the garden. So quite often my camera positions are in areas where it would be difficult to run a lead to a solar panel which was then getting sun. You could build your own power supply. <clears throat> I've seen people suggesting using car batteries for example. There are some difficulties uh, with that. Uh, a car battery has two main features that are worth thinking about in this sort of area. One is that it can store a very large amount of juice. It's uh, a very effective storage uh, mechanism. <clears throat> Sorry. But the second is that they are designed to produce very high currents with a very short delay when there is a power demand. And it only takes something slightly wrong in the camera, perhaps moisture uh, creating a circuit where it shouldn't have been. And moisture is the enemy of these cameras. And that car battery can then produce enough current that will produce a puff of magic smoke out of your camera. Uh, that will make it as effective at taking pictures and videos as your general house brick. Uh, I would be very careful in doing any of that, uh, simply because uh, even with cheap cameras it's a shame to lose one to a simple accident like that. And there are plenty of alternatives. Also, as, as somebody pointed out on one of the uh, Facebook uh, forums I, I browse occasionally, that of course uh, fitting uh, a homemade device like that would invalidate your camera's warranty. So you could have a very nice expensive camera that you're thrilled at the quality of pictures you're getting from, uh, destroyed and then not easily replaced without spending money. Uh, by accidentally putting too much power through it. So I hope that's made you uh, have some thoughts about how to power a camera uh, and I hope any of the lessons I've learned are useful to you. Uh, always on these videos people do say please like and subscribe. Um, it's a habit I think people get into. It would be, I would very much like people to like uh, on this series of videos uh, because it makes it easier for people to find. There are videos of varying quality on a lot of these subjects uh, and the search engines seem to use the number of likes as a measure of the quality of the video. And so if you thought this video was useful to you I would appreciate you liking. Uh, it makes it easier for people to find, uh, it makes it more fulfilling uh, to spend the time to create the video. But more importantly than liking that, there's a lot of people who send me questions about the use of wildlife cameras and, and one of the bits of advice I have to give is don't just look at these videos talking about using cameras. Look at the clips, Look, you know, not just look at the clips on my site, but look at the clips other people have taken. See how they have framed them, see how they've worked out where to take the picture from. Uh, because there's a lot to learn and I'm constantly learning. 
Uh, it's a fascinating area uh, to be looking at uh, the behaviour of these uh, beautiful wildlife creatures. Um, and uh, I encourage other people to get interested as well. Thank you very much for paying attention. I hope this is useful. Uh, please feel free to make comments in the comment area below if you think there is an issue worth uh, taking up further or whether you found uh, a useful source of, say, cheap batteries. I'm sure other people would also want to hear. Thank you very much.